When we take up an interest in spirituality, as we begin our practice, our study, as we begin to engage with others on the path, something which seems to be very common is that we begin to develop an ideal in our mind of how we should be, of what it means to be spiritual, which is usually based on what we observe in regard to those who we consider as enlightened, who we consider to be spiritual masters or awakened beings or what have you those who we most look up to as examples of what it means to be spiritual. And this ideal is usually something along the lines of someone who is, at the very least, at peace within themselves. But more than this, perhaps someone who is always joyful, who is undisturbed by anything, who is never upset, never angry or anxious, and certainly never sad or depressed. Someone who is also very knowledgeable or wise, someone who is always radiating love and light, someone who seems, as far as we can tell, to have reached some level of perfection. And by observing such figures, we create this ideal in our mind of what it means to be spiritual and then seek to live up to that ideal. Now, this would seem on the surface to be a very positive thing, to want to live up to such a noble ideal. There is also a negative aspect to it that we tend not to notice. You see, what we tend to do is hold this ideal in our mind while constantly comparing ourselves to it to see how we measure up and where we fall short of that ideal. We tend to feel inadequate, we feel unworthy, we may even feel ashamed. A lot of people struggle with feelings of inadequacy. The sense that one is not enough in some regard, not good enough, not wise enough, not worthy enough, and so on. It's a very common issue throughout humanity. But even in spirituality, we can tend to feel this way, perhaps even more so, because we find that we compare ourselves not just to the average person, but to these great spiritual masters. And in our minds, we tend to imagine these people as being absolutely perfect in every imaginable way. And so we set the standard very high. We tend to raise them up on pedestals, likely imagining them to be far more perfect than they actually are. And so we set the bar quite high for ourselves, perhaps even beyond our own reach. And because we never seem to quite measure up, we always feel inadequate. And that feeling of inadequacy becomes a kind of condemnation of ourselves, a rejection of ourselves. In some sense, it can even be a sort of self-loathing when we compare ourselves to that perfect, enlightened ideal and see just how imperfect we are. We can be very judgmental, very condemning of ourselves. And this can cause not only a great deal of suffering, but can also become a great impediment to our awakening. There's all kinds of ways that we try to deal with these imperfections of ours. And one very common way is to deny them entirely. As we hold in our mind this ideal of perfection based on what we observe in those who we consider to be enlightened, we try our best to imitate, we try to mimic their behavior, their personality traits, their attitude, their way of speaking and so on. We may even change our external appearance in order to appear more spiritual. And we take on this whole new persona based on what we imagine a spiritual person should look like, how they should behave and speak and so on. So when we're out in the world, especially among other spiritual aspirants, we might play this role, this character of someone who is enlightened, or if not enlightened, at least someone who is highly advanced or highly knowledgeable in regard to spirituality. But it's often just a facade. That is, we're not really being authentic. We're not being transparent. We're not being honest about who we are. We're trying to present ourselves in a way that isn't really true to where we are on our journey. And beneath that facade, we might be feeling all kinds of uneasiness. We might be unhappy or anxious or frustrated, or at the very least, we simply feel inadequate. And we may have all kinds of material desires that we don't want others to find out about. 
sexual desires, desires for wealth or fame, all kinds of attachments, all kinds of indulgences, all of which we hide well from others. And to add to all of this, we may have the constant need for approval. In fact, whenever we're putting on an act for others, it's always arising from the need for validation and approval. Otherwise, we just wouldn't care what others think of us. And therefore, we wouldn't make any effort to present ourselves in any way other than how we actually are. We wouldn't make any effort to hide our flaws or exaggerate our positive qualities. But that's usually exactly what we do we're, when we're trying to hide from others and instead present ourselves in a way that is much more acceptable, or in some cases even admirable. And if we can get others to admire us, that's where it's at. Having people fawn all over you, having them looking up to you with that glaze of astonishment in their eyes, hanging on to your every word, and flattering you with compliments and praise. And we derive a great deal of pleasure from all that. We feed on it because deep down, maybe we don't really feel very good about ourselves. We might feel insecure, we might feel unworthy, and so we're constantly in need of others to validate us. In our minds, based on this ideal of spiritual perfection, we see anything less than that as unworthy. And so we secretly carry this sense of unworthiness deep inside. Just by being anything less than enlightened, that's enough for us to feel inadequate, even ashamed. And it's that shame which motivates us to hide behind the facade of spiritual perfection. And more than this, so long as we are in denial of our imperfections, we try our best to avoid them, to avoid acknowledging them. We don't even want to acknowledge these aspects in ourselves, not even when we're alone. And we have so much shame, so much condemnation in regard to these things that we do our best to bury them and to remain distracted. But the problem is that these things never really get resolved. They aren't transformed or transcended because we refuse to address them. The best we can do is just pretend they don't exist. We can pretend as if we've already transcended them, as if we have risen above them. But in actuality, all we're really doing is repressing. And when we put on this pretense of being enlightened, or at least highly elevated, it's all very precarious, very fragile. It's just a thin veil covering up all those things in us that we would rather not acknowledge. But all those things are still there. They haven't gone away. And that pretense, that facade that we've built up to hide it, is always at risk of crumbling. So even if you manage to carry this air of tranquility and blissfulness, of love and light, right beneath that is a nagging sense of unease. You might even call it anxiety. Because what if the facade does crumble? What if you slip up? What if someone catches on that it's all an act? What if the veil is so thin that someone sees right through it? Or what if someone exposes you? What if all the things you've been hiding, your flaws, your unhealthy habits, your negative emotions and so on, what if somehow it all gets exposed? So there's always this underlying fear that you might be exposed, that others might come to find that you aren't as enlightened as you pretend to be. And that can be a constant companion, always this lingering sense of anxiety at the thought that you might be exposed. And there may also be some incentive to uphold that facade simply due to the judgment of others within the spiritual community. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but spiritual people are sometimes the most judgmental. If you're not living up to a certain lifestyle, if you don't engage in some particular spiritual practice, or you're unfamiliar with certain concepts, if you have some unhealthy habit, or some trivial interest, or maybe it's the way you dress, or the music you listen to, or the kind of food you eat, if somehow you don't measure up to someone else's ideal of what it means to be spiritual, you can get a lot of criticism for it. You could be ridiculed. You can even be outright rejected. 
But something to understand is that people judge others because of their own feelings of inadequacy, their own insecurities. We judge others to distract from our own flaws and imperfections. And perhaps we all have our own insecurities. And maybe when you're in a room full of other spiritual aspirants who all seem to be so blissful and tranquil and awake, Perhaps everyone is really struggling deep down with all kinds of personal issues, all kinds of uncomfortable and unsettling thoughts and emotions, all kinds of limiting beliefs and negative self-talk, all kinds of fears and frustrations. And maybe everyone is just doing a good job at hiding it. But as long as we're busy putting on this facade, we're not really getting anywhere. We're actually preventing ourselves from any real significant growth or transformation. Now, one of the reasons we might tend to reject these undesirable aspects in ourselves is because we might say, well, that's all just ego. All that desire and attachment, all that anger and anxiety, all those negative thoughts and beliefs and emotions, it's all coming from ego. And we're trying to get rid of the ego. So how can we accept any of that? And so in our attempt to get rid of ego, we push all those things away. But we don't really push them away, as I already said. We just push them down into the shadows at best, where we don't have to acknowledge them where we can forget about them for a while. We might even convince ourselves that we've done away with it all entirely. We might even convince ourselves that we've done away with ego, which is really the biggest ego trip there is. And so now we have this whole persona of spiritual perfection, which is really just ego taking on a new form, using our interest in spirituality as a disguise. So we really haven't gotten rid of anything. We haven't really transcended anything. All we've done is create the illusion that it's all been transcended. But nothing really goes away. Nothing actually gets resolved. All we've really done is reject ourselves to the degree of creating a whole new persona in order to cover it all up. But deep beneath that, there remains that underlying sense of inadequacy. We remain clouded and contracted, and all of this prevents us from truly waking up. So rather than rejecting who or where we are, or denying or repressing our undesirable aspects, our negative thought patterns and emotions, our desires, our attachments, our various flaws and imperfections, we can instead come to acknowledge and embrace all of it, every last bit of it, whatever is there in us. We just allow it to be there without any resistance. Even that feeling of inadequacy, we just acknowledge it and allow it to be. We accept ourselves just as we currently are in this moment. We accept that we are not enlightened. We accept that we have all kinds of desires and attachments. We accept that we have flaws and imperfections. We accept whatever feelings are there in us, whether it's anxiety or insecurity, frustration or anger, grief, sadness, despair, whatever is there, we accept it. We don't deny any of it. We don't reject it. We acknowledge and embrace it. And if we happen to notice that there's some shame or judgment in regard to these things, we also acknowledge and accept that as well. Because here's the thing, none of that will go away if we simply turn our attention away from it, if we simply deny it or pretend it isn't there. We can go a long time pretending in this way, but it can't go on forever. Eventually, we have to face it. And the sooner we face it, the sooner we can begin to work through it. And that's where the real transformation takes place. We can spend years pretending to be spiritual, but the journey really begins with self-acceptance. That's what opens up the door to real transformation. So we have to rid ourselves of this idea that in order to be spiritual, we have to be perfect. We have to be flawless. We have to rid ourselves of the shame we feel in not being enlightened. We have to get rid of the idea that to be engaged in spirituality, in spiritual practice or study or what have you, 
that you have to feel a certain way or that certain feelings are acceptable and others are unacceptable. Remember that spirituality is about waking up and in order to wake up from our illusions, we first have to acknowledge them. We have to look right at them and deeply into them. If we're simply pretending to be awake, that's just another illusion, another dream. In order to wake up, we have to first be aware that we're asleep to many things. In order to let go of attachments, we have to be aware of our attachments. In order to overcome fear, we have to acknowledge that fear and to face it. In order to transcend ego, we have to recognize all the ways in which ego is operating, including all the ways it uses spirituality as a guise, as a way of strengthening and maintaining itself. And it can be very tricky in that regard. But whatever it is that we're seeking to transcend, we first have to become fully aware of it. And that's very different from denial and rejection. Denial is just a way of going back to sleep. Denial is a way of deluding ourselves all the more. So it all begins, first of all, by acknowledging that you're not enlightened and learning to be okay with that. There's no shame in that. And all these other things that come along with it, all the desires and attachments we have, all the various forms of suffering, the anxiety, the fear, the sadness, whatever is there, it's okay. It doesn't make you any less spiritual. What we forget, or perhaps we never really considered, is that we come to spirituality in order to awaken. We come to spirituality because we have so many illusions, limiting beliefs, attachments, and so on. We come to spirituality because we suffer, and we're looking for a way to transcend all of that. And what that means is that everyone who is engaged in spirituality, in spiritual practice and study, is there because of their own suffering, their own undesirable qualities, their own illusions, their own so-called flaws and imperfections. In other words, spirituality as a practice is not designed for perfect people. It's not for those who are already fully awake or enlightened. It's for everyone else. It's a place to learn and heal and grow. It's not meant to be a role-playing game where everyone shows up to pretend that they're enlightened, although a lot of people seem to think it is. But rather, it's meant to be a place where we show up just as we are, not hiding anything, not putting on any sort of pretense, but just being true to where we currently are. It's meant to be a place to drop our pretense, to drop the facade, to drop all those layers of false identification. It's meant to be a means for self-discovery, for self-realization. But in order to do that, we have to begin with self-acceptance, not to deny anything, but to acknowledge it all. So this idea that to be spiritual, you have to be perfect, you can throw that out and you can replace it with the idea that spirituality is for those of us who are suffering, who feel lost, who feel confused, who have all kinds of unresolved issues, emotional wounds, negative thought patterns, illusions, and so on. Maybe you feel a bit lost sometimes, or unsure or uncertain. Maybe sometimes you have no idea at all what you're doing or what direction to take. Maybe sometimes you feel hopeless and depressed. Maybe sometimes you feel lonely or scared, and maybe that's fine. Maybe that's all just part of this human experience. Maybe that's nothing to feel ashamed of. And certainly there is this desire to be free of all that, to transcend all of that. But maybe the way to go about it is not to resist any of it, but to fully surrender, to let go, to accept it, to allow it to just be as it is, to stop struggling against it and to relax with it. What if the quickest way to enlightenment is to simply accept everything just as it is without any rejection or resistance? I mean, I don't know that to be true. I'm not enlightened after all, but it's something to consider. And what I do know is that I spent a lot of years trying to push all of that away. I spent a lot of years in denial, in self-rejection, repressing many of my undesirable traits and tendencies, negative emotions and so on. 
And I found that not only does this not work, but it actually slows one's progress. It gets in the way of real genuine transformation. It gets in the way of awakening because it's not authentic. It's pretend. It's an unwillingness to open up. And when I changed my approach from self-rejection to self-acceptance, that's when everything really started opening up for me. That's when a lot of those undesirable qualities began dropping away. And I'm still in that process, not to give the impression that I've dropped everything and that I've transcended all my illusions and I'm now fully awake. I'm still in the process of acknowledging these things in myself and coming to accept them more and more. I'm always coming back to these things over and over again, each time going a little more deeply into them, each time learning something new, each time letting go a little bit more. But what I have found is that the more I accept these things, just bringing awareness to whatever issues I'm faced with, whatever suffering or resistance, whatever illusions I may have, the more I bring awareness to those things, the more they tend to resolve themselves. When we accept, what that means is that we're no longer resisting, we're no longer struggling and fighting. It means we're willing to face whatever it is that we've been trying to hide from or escape from, to face it and look deeply into it. And as we do, we come to understand it more deeply, more thoroughly. And it's through this kind of understanding that we're able to overcome it. Because often what we come to understand is how unnecessary it all is. And when we see that it's unnecessary, we drop it. But we can't come to understand these things if we're always avoiding them. That's why the more we deny them, repress them, run from them, the more they remain unresolved. Or as Carl Jung so well put it, what we resist persists. And this is because without facing it, without going into it, exploring it deeply, getting to the very root of it, we never come to understand it. And so we never resolve it. And then it just remains with us. And there it continues to disturb us, to cause us all kinds of suffering and unease. So if we really want to resolve these things in us, to overcome them or transcend them, if we really want to be free of suffering and to find peace within or whatever it is that we're seeking on this spiritual journey, all of that begins with a willingness to accept and most importantly to accept oneself just as you are in the moment with whatever is there in you, fully acknowledging it, not denying anything, not avoiding anything, but bringing it all out into the light of awareness because that's where the darkness dissolves. That's where everything gets resolved. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.